Hello everybody, my name is Davide Piccini from Lausanne. I'm going to present our paper entitled Four Dimensional Respiratory Motion Resolved Whole Heart Coronary MR Angiography, which was published in Magnetic Resonance in Medicine in the issue of April 2017. This is a collaboration work between Lausanne and the NYU, and myself and Dr. Li Feng are co first authors of this manuscript. So let's get started. What we uh, are talking about here is uh, coronary MRI, but more in general, uh, high resolution acquisitions uh, uh, with high volumetric coverage of the heart. Meaning that we are trying with MRI to acquire an organ that is constantly moving, is beating and moving because of uh, a respiratory motion. How this is done, how is this done uh, in practice? Um, usually the, the, the gold standard is diaphragmatic navigators. So what it means is First of all, the cardiac motion is dealt with by segmenting the acquisition over several heartbeats and then triggering it to a stable phase of the cardiac cycle, which could be, for instance, uh, uh, end systole or mid diastole. At each cardiac cycle, not only a certain amount of data is acquired, but also an extra uh, diaphragmatic navigator, which is uh, uh, an external acquisition on uh, the liver lung interface. This allows us to see at each heartbeat the position of the liver. Uh, the displacement of the liver due to the respiratory motion. At this point uh, we have an acceptance window which is the uh, green one here in the GIF that is used uh, such that only the data points that are acquired at a certain respiratory position usually and the expiration are accepted the other data are rejected and reacquired. As you can see also from the GIF the, GIF, the acceptance rate is quite low so uh, the scan time is usually long because the efficiency is around 40% the ease of use is not great because not only we have to place our field of view correctly but also the navigator which is uh, not that trivial as we saw the respiratory motion is dealt with by gating uh, cardiac motion is dealt with by ECG triggering but on the other hand this technique has been around for more than 20 years so there are several big patient studies out there published and also multi-center trials uh, an alternative that was more recently published uh, is called the respiratory self-navigation which is pretty much motion correction on uh, the respiratory motion over the heart. And uh, the, the concept is to uh, try to shift the motion detection from the navigator to within the data acquisition so that we actually have uh, uh, motion information of the heart itself and we can correct for it. In this case, we see uh, that we can acquire, for instance, an extra readout within the data acquisition, always oriented from the superior and inferior, inferior uh, direction from which we can extract the position of the blood pool. That's what we do in our uh, work in MRM and uh, radiology, as mentioned, and try to do motion correction using this information. So the technique is clearly uh, easier to use because there is no longer uh, a navigator that needs to be placed. The scan time goes down because the efficiency is 100%. Since we do motion correction, we use all the data. Um, the respiratory motion is dealt with by correction, 1D as I showed you, but there are several publications that try to do 3D motion correction, rigid, non-rigid, affine. Uh, and the cardiac motion is dealt with still with ECG triggering. There is no multicenter experience because it's a, a rather a younger technique. On the other hand, we have been using our own implementation of self-navigation in Lausanne for uh, now four years and we acquired more than 1500 patients, so it's uh, quite a good uh, partial result at the moment. But let's get to the core of the talk, which is, uh, well, is there an alternative way to do uh, high resolution whole art MRI, coronary MRI? The core concept is that we anyway have to uh, deal with uh, uh, respiratory motion. So whether we want to correct, to gate, we anyway have to detect it. So we can do that in several forms. We can use the navigator, as we saw uh, before. We can use self-navigation, so directly from the data, or we can even use uh, a simpler method by uh, looking at the um, intensity over time of uh, all the coils and uh, using a combination to extract uh, uh, a respiratory signal from what we call FID navigators, so the case space center amplitude fluctuation of the channels. Any of this, uh, so what we use in this uh, work is actually the case space center, but uh, any of the methods would actually give you a respiratory signal um, that can be used for uh, the reconstruction you want to do. The second ingredient uh, of uh, uh, our work is a flexible acquisition, uh, meaning that we do have, we can extract the uh, respiratory motion, but we do not know a priori how this uh, matches our acquisition. So we need a trajectory that is uniform over time so that we can uh, um, 
uh, take a subset of our data, any subset of our data, and still be uh, rather pseudo uniform. The this is ideally uh, achieved by our 3D radial trajectory that implements the spiral phyllotaxis pattern. As you see here, there is a golden angle displacement over time, and uh, it uh, reaches a full um, coverage of k space um, in the whole acquisition. So we can uh, acquire our data triggered with this uh, trajectory. We have the respiratory signal. We take the respiratory signal that we extracted. And uh, well, what we can do is uh, the uh, simplest thing, an uncorrected reconstruction. We take all the data, put them together, and see what, what happens. So the result is not uh, particularly bad because uh, since it's a radial acquisition, there are no um, discrete artifacts due to respiratory motion that is uncorrected. So you see a lot of blurring around, but uh, still the heart is visible. But you see it's not uh, like that we can visualize the coronary. So it's not ideal. With the very same data, we can also do one-dimensional motion correction, what I showed you before, self-navigation. So let's correct the data from the superior inferior displacement. As you can see, the data set get better, so you can start seeing some of the coronaries. It's still a lot blurred because in this example, I chose um, a data set that where the approximation to 1D respiratory motion is not enough to resolve the, the anatomy. And But you can see here there are some improvements, but you see in the coronal view that uh, the heart, although the heart is slightly sharper, the liver is completely blurred because we approximate the motion direction. What we can do also is respiratory data binning, which is done in several other publications, meaning that we take the respiratory motion, we divide it in several respiratory states or bins, we take our flexible data acquisition that comes handy now, and we uh, divide uh, our data according to the respiratory state in which they were acquired, so in this case four uh, sub datasets, and we reconstruct them. What we can do is grid in reconstruction, so the simplest reconstruction possible, and you can see that uh, being now that we have only one fourth of the total data, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, undersampling artifacts, so streaking and blurring. So it's not ideal. What we could do is image registration. There are several groups trying to do that with different motion models. But uh, the alternative way we wanted to do uh, is to uh, apply con sensing and specifically XD grasp reconstruction that was published by Dr. Li Feng uh, a couple of years ago. So. What this is, is basically a comprehensive reconstruction, so iterative regularized reconstruction of sparse data, where our uh, image series is a four-dimensional matrix in which um, the respiratory states are um, used as uh, the temporal dimension in which our data is uh, sparse. So each respiratory state is similar to um, the adjacent one, but for uh, minimal details. M in the equation is our multi-coil k-space data acquired with the radial trajectory. F is the uh, Fourier transform, of course, uh, C is the coil sensitivities, and then we have the regularization term with uh, the lambda and the sparsifying transform that is, uh, in our case, total variation. So basically, we take this data, we use the XD grasp to reconstruct them, and uh, what happens is we uh, obtain much uh, sharper and more well-defined images, or actually volumes. So from our 1D correction, what we can do, an alternative way is select the most stable respiratory phase, which is usually end expiration. Use only this part of the data, but reconstruct it with the XD grasp reconstruction, and that's what we obtain. So as you can see, not only the coronaries are much more, that much sharper and more visible, but uh, also in the coronal view, both the heart and the liver are sharp because we are not trying to approximate the motion correction, the, the, the motion of the heart with some sort of. Uh, motion model, but we are trying to resolve this motion without having any prior knowledge about how it looks like. So of course we didn't test this only in one subject, but uh, we did it in 11 volunteers, 1.5t. Uh, the acquisition used this 3D radial trajectory with the spiral phyllotaxis pattern, T2 prepped, fat set. Uh, the acquisition was BSSFP and then uh, we um, uh, we graded the for uh, vessel sharpness, vessel length of the coronaries, and quality grading and uh, diagnostic grading, meaning whether each coronary segment was uh, diagnostic or not. These are a couple of examples. This is the XD grasp reconstruction together with the 1D respiratory self navigation and the uncorrected, uh, all side by side. As you can see, uh, you can very clearly see the improvement from bottom up. Second data set, same thing, respiratory resolved. One, the correction that was clearly not enough in this case, it's uh, uh, still very blurred, and uh, uh, the uncorrected data set. These are some numerical results. 
uh, just to show that we tried the uh, different combinations of so four phases, uh, four respiratory phases or six, res six respiratory phases reconstruction. And we see that in volunteers, uh, four respiratory phases are more than enough. In fact, uh, uh, this is a very nice result. From 47% uh, of uh, diagnostic segments, we uh, go up to 70% of diagnostic uh, coronary segments. This is how a volumetric data set looks like. So it's, uh, um, uh, the resolution is isotropic in all directions. But we can also look at uh, the different respiratory phases. As you can see here in the three volumes, you see that the motion is uh, as literature says, uh, uh, mainly in the superior inferior direction, that's why the 1D correction usually it's not too bad on a radial acquisition, but you see that it's much more complicated. So uh, this comes for free, so our reconstruction is not only one respiratory state, so we have always uh, all the respiratory states already reconstructed by X degrad. So to answer our question, is there an alternative way? Yes, uh, we used uh, X degrad to resolve the motion. We keep the high ease of use, we keep the high uh, efficiency, and but we don't have to worry about what kind of motion is underlying in the respiration because we try to resolve it without any prior knowledge. Uh, the cardiac motion is still dealt with ECG trigger, and of course there are no multicenter trials. But uh, uh, here as an outlook, um, should we stop here? Because of course uh, cardiac motion is still a problem. Uh, in fact, one of our PhD students, Simone Coppo, uh, modified the phyllotaxis sequence to uh, acquire what he says, uh, what he called in free running, so without any ECG triggering. And together with uh, Li Feng at the NYU, again, we applied a more complex data binning. We take the uh, acquisition, divide in bins for the respiratory states, but divide also in bins for several cardiac phases. Then we do a more complex uh, but still same uh, x degrad reconstruction. And what we obtain is a five dimensional data set with high spatial resolution, which you have volume, you have cardiac motion, you have respiratory motion. And then uh, retrospectively, you can go and look at each view in 3D. You can look at each different phase or each uh, different view of a cinematic uh, rendering volume that can be rendered in each direction because it's isotropic or you can choose one specific phase and reformat for the coronaries. And this is actually work that has been uh, recently accepted in MRM so you will uh, um, soon see it in uh, the early views. And with that uh, <laughs> I'm gonna thank you for your attention and uh, um, see you at the next uh, conference.